Thank you very much for staying on the marketplace and welcome back. Now to the very first story. The Ghana Investments Promotion Center, GIPC, has in its third quarter investments into the country recorded $241 million. The following report finds out whether this level of interest in the country, despite the upcoming elections, has impacted on investment attraction. According to the Ghana Investment Promotion Center, GIPC, the total value of investments from July to September reached $241 million. This is what it got for some 46 projects registered with the center. Last year, this actually marks about 70% reduction in the $820 million secured in the third quarter of 2015. Investments brought in by foreigners for the third quarter of 2016 reached $235 million. But when you compare this amount to the same period in 2015, it actually represents a 59% reduction in foreign direct investments. The projected jobs that will be created for Ghanaians have also gone down by some 75% compared to the same period last year. But the center has maintained that if you compare the investment numbers so far to the same period in 2015, it supports claims that the election has not impacted negatively on capital attraction. Now, energy expert Kwame Jantwa has reiterated the development of renewable energy as an integral part of Ghana's power mix. Now, he is calling on building adequate capacity in the energy sector to enable investors have access to reliable power to do business. The Energy Commission requires businesses to adopt 20% of renewable energy sources to enhance their power supply in 2020. Kwame Jantwa was speaking in an interview at the sidelines of the 20th anniversary of the celebration of the Kumasi Institute of Technology and Environment Kite in Accra. It was under the theme, Two Decades of Leadership in Facilitating Access to Sustainable Energy Services and Cleaner Environment. The experience of Dumso, it has brought to light opportunities in the energy power sector. And one of the, one of the opportunities is renewable energy. I think renewable energy should be an integral part of our power mix. In so doing, we need to be able to build capacity in that area so that Ghanaian entrepreneurs who are interested in the power sector can take it up. What areas are we talking about? We talk about solar, we talk about wind, we talk about wave, we talk about all the other alternative types of energy that we can use in this country. All right, so that was Kwame Jantua, an energy expert. Moving on, revenue from gold exports in the reach over $4.5 billion by the end of the year. This comes as the contribution from the commodity, which was pegged at $3.3 billion, have exceeded the projection by about 73% in spite of the, of the challenges with gold prices on the international market. This was disclosed at this year's Ghana Mining Industry Awards. Kuku Aban was there for Joy News and our reports. The award ceremony, which was the second in the series, saw Newmont Ghana Gold, a half a mine, see off eight other mining firms to clinch the prestigious Company of the Year Award. The company's outstanding corporate social investments, environmental management, innovation, among others, did the trick. Regional Senior Vice President for Newmont Ghana, Alvin Pristorio, said the company will simply continue to create value for its stakeholders. For us as, as Newmont, it's not about winning prizes. It's about creating value and improving lives through sustainable and responsible mining. For us, it's important to improve what we do on a daily basis. And that's how I see our business going forward. We want to create value for all our stakeholders, stakeholders, uh, governments, community surrounding our, our, our and that's how we see our business. The best performer in mine supplies and support services went to PW International, while Asanko Gold grabbed the Corporate Social Investment Project of the Year Award. Best performer in local content was picked by Adamus Resources, whereas the best performer in exploration went to Cape Coast Resources. Best performer in innovation was picked by Newmont Ghana Gold for Mine, with Chirana Gold Mine grabbing the Occupational Health and Safety Best Performer Award. 
the best performer in environment and management, was jointly won by Newman Ghana Gold Achim Mine and Chirano Gold Mine. President of the Chamber of Mines, Kwame Adokofor, commended players in the industry for their resilience in the face of what he said are challenging times for the sector. He, however, underscored the need for stakeholders to support the Minerals Commission in addressing the menace of Galamse operations in the country. In the face of these very difficult times, companies have been resolute in making the operation, keeping the operations afloat and relevant in Ghana's economy. A recurring challenge to the industry, the outside, the activities. The Chamber is in full support of the Minerals Commission press mainstream and formalize the activities of the people to ensure that Ghana optimize the benefits from the sub-sector while managing the adverse impacts. Second Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, John Senesiama, was full of praise of the mining sector, saying it still contributes the largest to the economy. $4.5 billion, he noted, is expected from gold exports by the end of the year. A development, he says, is helping the country balance its payments. The mining sector continues to repatriate significant amounts of its export earnings. From 2010 to date, it has repatriated about 64% of its total export earnings, made up of about 17% mandatory repatriation and 47% voluntary repatriation. I am indeed looking forward anxiously to the day we will do away with stability agreements and at the same time obtain 100% repatriation, even though the current level of repatriation is commendable. This year, gold production has picked up significantly, apparently due to the delay in hiking its interest rate, a practice which tends to divert investments from gold. The increase in prices engendered by the delay and the concomitant increase in production by some mining companies are having positive impacts on the country's balance of payments. His Excellency Ambassador John Bentham Williams was presented a Lifetime Achievement Award for his immense contribution to the sector. The second Ghana Mining Industry Awards was under the theme Recognizing Excellence celebrating achievement in the mining industry. Yes, so on the market, please. And moving on, the Bank of Ghana will, from this Wednesday, the 30th of November, start selling part of the $1.8 billion cocoa loan to commercial banks. Now, the central bank to this end has released some regulations for interested banks and calendar to guide the auction. Now, let's, let's get more on these uh, particular development the details. And uh, joining me in the studio right here is George Riaffi, my colleague. Good mm -hmm. afternoon, George. Yeah, how are you doing? I hope you're doing great. Uh, you're looking good. Uh, you're looking also great this <laughs> afternoon. Thank you very much. Now, think of this calendar, how the guidelines, how does it well, work out? Well, well, basically, how would it be done in the mm -hmm. first place? Just like any uh, normal electronic uh, auction that the Bank of Ghana would do. But this time around, you're doing it via a secure platform provided by the agency, Thomas and Reuters Foundation, basically. So those who are licensed or those who can do the auction will basically place their bets on that day and the committee that has been set up by the Bank of Ghana to supervise this whole thing 
will accept their bets. Mm -hmm. But under the rules, actually, uh, each bank, for instance, if you manage a bank or if you're a treasurer, a dealer in that bank, your bet should not go below 500,000 uh, uh, dollars. dollars, actually. That is the minimum bet. And also, if you do the calculations, uh, you cannot go beyond $4 million for each bank because with respect to this particular auction mm. that will start this Wednesday, they're actually putting out $20 million. Okay. And so if we have about, let's just say, about 20 commercial banks participating, uh, each one is likely to get a fraction or get about $4 million. That is the maximum. Okay. It doesn't mean that when you bid for it, you're likely going to get everything. Exact amount. But you can bid like $600,000, mm. and then maybe they'll give you like maybe $400,000 or mm. something. So that is how the system will work, just like mm. any other electronic platform okay. that you trade with the Bank of Ghana. So which are some of the institutions? Uh, right now, having... I mean, most of the big commercial banks, uh, the, the Tier 1 banks, uh, the Echo Bank, the Barclays, the Standard Chartered Bank, often participate in these auctions. But as we speak right now, we don't have the official list from the Bank of Ghana as in which of these institutions are actually going to make the bets on that particular day when they actually open the door, take requests from each of the commercial banks that are interested in the dollars. Now, according to the plan, the Bank of Ghana wishes to issue out $60 million over the next four weeks. You think this is enough? Well, I have been engaged in some of these commercial banks, and they say that is woefully inadequate. Now, you have, well, let's just say, one of the top three banks, for instance, is looking at uh, about uh, $20 million or so even $50 million for its clients to help aid their imports and exports and even issuing letters of credit. And sure. basically, so if you're asking the bank to take about just $4 million, That's that low. is not enough. Yeah. But when you also listen to the regulator, they claim that there are other things that they're planning to do. So okay. this would just be a fraction of the support onto the market to make available enough dollars. So they shouldn't see this as just a one-off, but they are that they are introducing. But when you speak to these banks, some of them even show me their bill or their request and as much as $200 million. So uh, it will not be enough to meet the demand of even the top five banks that are very active in the Forex market. You remember the Bank of Ghana has in the past, you know, issued out measures like this to control the city, but the sustainability was a problem. Do you think these current measures will make it sustainable? Well, sustainability, mm. it looks like we always get into this round. But if you compare what happened last year, where we saw almost about a 15% rate year to date, compared to the almost 5%, some would say that's a marked improvement. But why people are worried is what has happened just over the last two weeks, where you have consistently seen the city go down against the dollar mm. over the period. It could be 0.1% or 0.01% or point. 0.01%, but sure. it has been consistent. And if you engage most of these treasuries, mm. the argument is that it's backed by real demand uh, from these commercial banks. They are to uh, forward their inputs. Some are even going to do their importation even next year. But they think that, can I get the dollars right now because I don't know what will happen post-elections. So there's a real demand for it. As to how this thing can be sustained, well, as long as the Bank of Ghana claims they have enough reserves, which mm. might not be the situation on the ground, then it is not sustainable. There are other measures that can be done to help check the demand for dollars right now okay. so that at least things can be stabilized a little bit. Now, let, let's look at the impact on the city. How is it going to actually cushion um, the, 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 the impact? Of, it, it, of some would say it's a yes or no answer. Yes, because... If the current problem of the city has to do with basically a demand-driven problem, mm. then if you put out at least a little of that amount into the market, it could help. Some people are also saying that, just like the Bank of Ghana has given some indication that they're going, they are prepared to pump out dollars onto the market, it could affect the demand of those companies who are rushing for dollars right now when they don't actually need it. Because their fear right now is that Will I get enough dollars even post elections as well to bring in my input? So, mm. if the change over this quarter that the Bank of Ghana is promising, then that could affect the little bit of demand. But if you just oppose this with the amount of dollars these banks also need, mm. it looks like it might not completely stabilize things, but could slow the pace of the appreciation that we are seeing. Is the Bank of Ghana considering the, the, Euro, Euro, uh, the Euro bond proceeds uh, that it bid? It, it believes that those proceeds, some have already come into oh, the market already. Okay. But this one, basically the plan was to sell the cocoa loan syndication 
about $1.8 billion onto the market, and you're going to do it over a period. So let's see how things will pan. If you look at post the news about the action, mm. you didn't see any movements in the currency market. And the normal sure. circumstance, when even you hear this news, that should send some, have some effect or effect on the currency market. But we didn't see that. So let's see post the first auction. And let's see how the city will fare for at least a week. Then we can make a judgment or make an intelligent guess as to whether this would help or it wouldn't help at all. George, thank you for Thank you so much. Lafe. It's and great to be on the marketplace. Good to have you too. Thank you. All right, so that was George Riafi uh, talking to us about the Bank of Ghana's decision to actually uh, uh, sell issue some dollars onto the market to help cushion the city's depreciation. We, we're still waiting to talk to a currency analyst on the impact or his version of impact all on the CD. And uh, when we get to him, we'll put him on the line to ask a few questions. But for now, in a related development, currency dealers and treasurers of commercial banks are challenging claims the city's depreciation has been influenced by activities of speculators. Some government officials and even the Bank of Ghana have argued the current depreciation has been fueled by activities of persons who put out information that will lead to the de city's depreciation so they can cash in on that. But president of the association, Amar Gatti, disagrees. I would say it's backed by real demand. It is backed by real demand. There might be a bit of speculation, but most of it is backed by real demand. We have traders who are actually importing at this time. And we have a lot of trade transactions flowing through the system. So it's backed by actual demand. So what do you think is the way forward? There are some who are calling for intervention now. There are some who are also saying that, listen, Let's wait and see. For you, what do you make of these whole arguments going on currently in the market space? I'd probably say, first of all, market dynamics will obviously take place. Um, we've seen the dollar cross the four mark. On the interbank as of today, we've seen six being traded on the markets. That's high. Um, we think that we haven't seen the effect of the cocoa syndicated um, deal and then the euro bond. We haven't seen that effect on the market. And with the central bank going to introduce the FX auctions at the end of November, we think that we might see some inflows coming into the system that will help to stabilize the city. So um, it's not so much a wait and see, but... Um, as they say, what I will find its level, market dynamics will definitely determine the price of the currency. Hey, welcome back. Now, the Deputy Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Jifa Gumashi, is urging the youth to be more innovative in helping to bridge the unemployment gap. A recent report by the World Bank on Jobs in Ghana revealed that about 48% of the youth between the ages of 15 and 24 um, do not have jobs. But in an interview with Joy Business, Deputy Minister for Tourism, Culture and Creative Arts, Jifa Gumashi, said they have efforts to help create their own jobs. When you've gone to university, you've gone to attain higher education, and you should not acquire that and sit down and expect someone to employ you only before you can work. That once you have higher education, you should be able to think outside the box and to be able to uh, position yourself to, to do something and you now be the employer. So the state is playing its part, but beyond what the state can do is what individuals can also do. The stories abound of individuals who have um, excelled in their countries um, and they, uh, they work for themselves. You have your, in Africa, you have your Dangotes. In Ghana, you have your um, uh, Osei Kwame Despite. He's, he's, he's an individual. See how many businesses he's grown. So really, I think that it's a state of mind. It's, it's, it's what you, 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 you recognize as your strength or your weakness and using it for, to your advantage and to the advantage of your community. And this is where we draw the curtains down on this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope you did enjoy the package.